Now it came to pass when the king, that is, King David, was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. Now it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day, but have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Therefore I have moved about with all the children of Israel. Have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and have made you a great name, like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more, as previously, since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also, the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled, and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord. And he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your sight, O Lord God, and you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. Is this the manner of man, O Lord God? Now what more can David say to you? For you, Lord God, know your servant. For your word's sake, and according to your own heart, you have done all these great things, to make your servant know them. Therefore you are great, O Lord God. For there is none like you, nor is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And who is like your people, like Israel, the one nation on the earth whom God went to redeem for himself as a people, to make for himself a name, and to do for yourself great and awesome deeds for your land, before your people whom you redeemed for yourself from Egypt, the nations and their gods. And you have made your people Israel your very own people forever. And you, Lord, have become their God. Now, O Lord God, the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, so let your name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel. And let the house of your servant David be established before you, For you, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, have revealed this to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore 
your servant has found it in his heart to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this goodness to your servant. Now therefore let it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue before you forever. For you, O Lord God, have spoken it, and with your blessing let the house of your servant be blessed forever. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together from Second Samuel chapter 7, where God makes a covenant with David to build his house forever. This is a critical chapter in the whole Bible because it lays before us the purpose that God has for the nation of Israel and for the house of David. When Jesus came, he was born king of the Jews of the line of David. He inherited the position as king of the Jews through his legal relationship with Joseph, as Matthew spells out the genealogy. But we know that he was biologically not the son of Joseph because he was born of a virgin, Mary. Mary was descendant from another of David's sons, Nathan, no doubt named after Nathan the prophet, who features in our reading. And the promise is simple. David had a desire to build a temple for God. He had a nice house. He was at peace. What was he going to do next? He would build a temple for God. But God says, no, you're not to build the temple. I will give you a son who will sit on your throne and he shall build your temple. And if he doesn't do the right thing, I'll chastise him, but I will not withdraw my mercy. You will always have a son to sit on the throne of Israel. And that is what happened. The line of King David went through the next 400 years, ruling in Jerusalem. Some of the kings were really good and some of them were really bad. And ultimately God exiled the nation but he preserved the line of King David and that line passed down to our Lord Jesus Christ, born King of the Jews, as asserted by the wise men from the East and as asserted by Jesus himself before Pilate, when Pilate interviewed Jesus. The thing that is established is this promise to David is that his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom. And that also implies that the nation of Israel will be an everlasting nation. That is the reason why the nation of Israel still exists today. And indeed there are people today who trace their genealogy back to King David. Well the Jews might think that they can reinstate a king of the house of King David because they do not recognize that Jesus fulfills all the promises that God made to David of an everlasting kingdom, an everlasting king. And God has granted that the Lord Jesus shall not only be king of Israel, that's too small a prize for him. He shall be king of kings and lord of lords. Most other dynasties last for a few hundred years then pass from one to another. If you look at Chinese dynasties, you look at European dynasties, the royal houses don't last forever. But the house of David has lasted 3,000 years so far. The nation of Israel, though they've been in exile for most of the last 3,000 years, yet God has preserved them as a nation and in these last days has re-established them in the land in preparation for the day when the Lord Jesus shall come and take up the throne. He declared when he was here, Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. And he is called the Christ, which means he is the anointed one. But just as David had to wait 15 years between when he was anointed and when he took up his throne, so the Lord Jesus has waited nearly 2,000 years when the day he could have taken up his throne if Israel had received him, until the day he returns, when he will be received not only by the Jews, but by the whole world. 